What's up everybody? This is Dustin Klein here from DigiFX. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use our new plugin, Depth. Depth allows you to create a depth map in After Effects with just one click. A depth map basically will allow you to add depth of field to your shots in a different way that will be more accurate and better looking than the After Effects camera. So you may be wondering, what exactly is a depth map? Well, a depth map is a grayscale version of our composition that's used to tell another plugin, such as the Lens Blur plugin, where in your shot to blur. An example of this would be this here. As you can see in this shot, as we wait for it to update, um, we have some added depth of field. And the Lens Blur plugin in After Effects is referencing this depth map here as it comes back to see where it will add the blur. So as we pull focus in our lens blur plugin, it can tell between light areas and dark areas how far away objects are. So we're going to go to a little bit easier of an example to show quickly. Um, here's what we will be making, and here is it in its final state. Um, it's basically just a rack focus from the red ball to the purple ball and back. Um, as you can see, depth is actually being extracted here. We are getting some out of focus in the red and then out of focus in the purple as the comp moves through. Here's our original comp without any kind of blur added at all. Um, as you can see, if we switch to our custom view, that these balls are actually staggered in z-space. They're not getting smaller because of the scale, but they're getting smaller because of their position. These layers are just colored layers with a CC sphere effect and a tin effect and they're referencing this reflection map just to get a little bit more detail on the surface. I'm going to switch back to our active camera. So applying depth is really, really easy. It's about the easiest plugin in the world to apply. And the good news is, is that it does the majority of the work for you. There are a couple different ways to apply it. You can either apply it through the effect menu and go to DigiFX Depth, but that's not how we're going to be applying it today. We're going to go to Composition and click Precompose depth. And what this does is it actually creates a new composition in our project menu called Death Comp. Depth Comp, not Death Comp. If we double click on this, we can see that two compositions were created here. Um, our first comp was exactly like our first one. And if we double click, we'll see that it's identical. It's just that composition moved forward. But if we go back to the Depth Comp and click on the second one, we'll see that we have a grayscale depth map that was created automatically for us and a master depth controller on the very top of our layer. And if we click open the effect controls of the master depth controllers, we can see a few options here. A minimum and a maximum input depth, a minimum and a maximum output depth, curve and channel options. And what these allow you to do is adjust the contrast between each of these layers. What we basically want to adjust for is to get the most contrast possible because when our lens layer effect looks at our, our depth map, it's going to be looking at the difference between light and dark to decide where things are. So the more contrast that we have, the more change we'll get in our blur and the more obvious it will be. Down here we have another curve options to choose between linear, squared, logarithmic, or exponential. These basically will adjust the curve of fall off between light and black. So we can get a couple different options here to just kind of perfect in on exactly what you want. I'm going to go for the squared option here. If I go back to the depth count, we can see that we have our two compositions, one our original and the second our depth map. And we'll just go ahead and I'll go to effect. I think it's below the screen, but it'll be effect, blur and sharpen, and then lens blur. The lens blur effect is a pretty cool effect. It's included in After Effects. And what's cool about it is that in it, you can actually select a depth map. And it's the only one of the blurs in After Effects that allows you to choose a depth map, which means that it's the only one of the blurs in, the After, in After Effects where you can blur parts of the frame depending on how close or far away they are, as long as your depth map shows this. So now that we have depth map layer selected, ball comp 2, which was our depth map, we can start adjusting our blur focus distance and our iris radius. 
as we increase the iris radius, the more obvious our blur will be. Um, but as we increase the blur focal distance, we will actually get a rack focus going on. So if I pull it all the way up to 255, we're going to see that our red ball is actually in focus. But if we were to bring that all the way down to zero, we'll see that our red ball goes out of focus and that our purple ball is suddenly in focus. And this is a very useful thing. I mean, we have a very simple example here, but if you want to add depth of field to a shot with you already have 3D information in your composition, um, this is going to look pretty good, you know. And we get all these different options, such as, you know, the iris blade curvature and the iris rotation. And we can even choose these different iris shapes. Um, so if you want to have a pentagon iris or a triangular iris, you now have that option. Where if you were just using the After Effects depth of field and the After Effects camera, you're not going to get nearly as much control in your blur. Um, so this will actually give you more of a lens blur, more of what it really looks like through a camera to give you a more realistic result. Um, and that's, it's pretty simple. It's simple as that. Um, the depth comp will actually just create that depth comp for you and you don't really have to do much work, which, you know, you might say, you know, with this example, it'd be pretty easy to go make that, you know, I could just maybe tint those balls and do this manually. But let's say we have something with a lot of layers, like all these layers here. Do you really want to go and add ramps and tint this to the point where you get this final result to actually get a realistic depth map? It's, it's not very easy to do without the plugin. So, you know, very, very easy. If you're trying to use a depth map in After Effects, um, depth will actually do it in just one click, as opposed to painstaking hours on end trying to create this by hand. Well, that about does it. Thank y'all 